Hello and welcome to episode 155 of section 138. I'm your host, Mark Colley, as always, joined by Bryson and Jacob. Uh, Bryson, how's the football today? The Blue Jays are still in the wildcard spot, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're not going to talk about <laughs> NFL Sunday. The Blue Jays win another series to close off their homestand, and they're now up again a game and a half over the Yankees in that second wildcard spot. So in baseball terms, or just for baseball, <laughs> things are looking good, and that's all we're going to talk about today for me. It's a very convenient dodge. Your Seattle Seahawks not doing everything you wanted them to do, but uh, Jacob, how are you? Considering I don't watch any football, I am very happy today. Uh, yeah, I, this game, this whole series, I mean, it started off not too great, but I would consider this a win, especially considering that the teams in the hunt, as well as the Blue Jays have started to take some L's. Uh, you know what? This, uh, this pennant race, these last two weeks of the season are looking to be very, very entertaining. Mm -hmm. And they're, it, it seems like the Blue Jays are finally setting, settling into some type of consistent pattern. Like we saw them win that eight game win streak and it was kind of ridiculous what they were doing and as exciting as it was you don't see like teams at the top of the league going on those win streaks relying on those win streaks to make progress in the division and in the postseason races what you see them doing is winning series winning two to three winning three to four and that's what the Blue Jays have been doing. It's seven straight series wins or looking for an eighth straight series win heading into Tampa Bay. Um, and they take the series from Minnesota and it seems just like clockwork at this point. Um, they are a game and a half up now for the second wild card spot over the New York Yankees. The Yankees and Garrett Cole got shelled today against the Cleveland Guardians, which you always love to see. You love to see um, Garrett Cole taking the L and taking a step back in the Cy Young race. But um, yeah, that's kind of the talk of the town right now. It's what the Blue Jays are doing. It's a seven straight series wins and settling into that kind of reliable winning pattern. So um, how do you guys see this moving forward? Big series against Tampa Bay, a couple of weeks left in the season. Um, what are your impressions from this series and what are you looking for moving forward? Well, the, first of all, something that a lot of people are not going to like is I think Hyunjin Ryu He's on the IL right now, but I think his his playing time this season is probably about to take an even bigger step back than a lot of people expect. And the you know this is his third or fourth straight start where he's just he's not been very good. ERA now well over four. So I think it's four thirty four to be ex to be exact. But for the rest of this series, I would say that this overall was a very complete team. And you know you you talk about how the game one was, was not good game two. They came out or came out one, six to two. It was very dominant. I mean, Steven Matz came out only two and runs over five and two thirds offense was able to pick them up and it was five to nothing in uh, today's game, even before the second inning. So it, it really was a bit of a statement uh, series for the team. And you, know, you look at the guys that we expect to be at the forefront of the bullpen, Trevor Richards, Adam Simber, Jordan Romano, even Nate Pearson, they all came in and were they were pretty much shutting the uh, the the Twins down. And one thing I want to point out about this game is it looked like today on Sunday it looked like this was going to be one of those ten to two ball games, but it really it wasn't like that. The Blue Jays scored five in the first inning, and then nothing. And the and I'm happy about this because the bullpen and the starting pitching, especially Jose Barrios, were able to shut down the Twins. And these are the type of games that you're going to need to win. In I mean. When you get this type of offensive performance, you get the pitching, you expect to win. But when you think about it, blowout games are not going to happen all the time. And we've seen that the Blue Jays can at least win these games. And the the thing now, where I think we're at the point now where we can look at the we can look at the schedule as and refer to it as the rest of the season because it's almost over. I mean, the Blue Jays have three against the Rays, then four against the Twins, three against the Yankees, and then three against Baltimore. At this point, I think we have to start really taking into consideration that the season is about to be done. And if you're looking if at the Yankees, their schedule is even worse. I would say that you have three against Texas, then three against Boston, three against the Blue Jays, and then three against the Rays to end the season. And if you're a Blue Jay fan, these last two weeks are going to be crucial because you have a game and a half up over the Yankees. Red Sox have a game over the Blue Jays. And I said to Mark before we start, this game and a half. Now I know the the half game will eventually play itself out, and that will be that will that will not exist once everyone's played 162 games. However, if you're look if you're the Blue Jays and you're looking to try and clinch that second spot, you're thinking, well, here the Yankees need at least two games to come back 
or to overtake the Blue Jays where they'd have to win two and the Blue Jays would have to lose two in order for the Reds, the Yankees to take any type of lead over them. And considering that aside from a three game series against the Rangers, the Yankees have a, a pretty tough schedule. I mean, Red Sox have that first wild card spot. Rays are looking to win the division and the Blue Jays are in the thick of it. And they're playing some of the best baseball I've seen in the past four years. This is the time I think where we can really buckle down and say, the starting pitching needs to be as good as it's been. The offense is going to need to definitely keep it up. But, it, you know, if you, I, I think if you're a Blue Jay fan, I don't want to jinx it, but I want to, or I think the chances of them making the playoffs are pretty good, actually. You took two of three from the, the Twins. Hope, hopefully it was three of three, but, you know, the, the first game wasn't too great. Aside from that, I think the rest of the schedule, it, it is, I would say, somewhat favorable for the Blue Jays. And if they can get consistent performances, they can get guys like like Springer, who's only hitting, I think, 130 or 140 over his last 10 games, 11 games. If he can heat up and you have the rest of these guys continuing to perform at MVP and Cy Young levels, this, it, it to me, looks like it's it's just the Blue Jays just keep making statements that, hey, we're not out of it and we are eventually going to overtake a lot of these teams and potentially play in or host that wild card game yeah um, another series and another win for the jays obviously it would have been great for them to sweep the twins but you know just going back to my reasoning for a couple of days ago i was very skeptical about this opening game uh because of the status of hunjinry what we've seen the struggles and it was just another uh, start like that where i believe it, again another short outing one of the shortest ever in his blue jays tenure he goes two innings five earned runs and at the time you know a lot of people were kind of I felt like a personally, I don't know what you guys, I'm sure you guys can agree with me though, relating to the wildcard sayings, a lot of people were overreacting um, in my opinion, over this game one loss. A lot of people were kind of freaking out and I'm not sure exactly why or what the reasoning was for them to freak out over pretty much one game. And I'm glad it kind of ended very quick because obviously uh, a day game followed by a night game, the Jays came out and won six two the next day um, followed by pretty much, you know, just efforts from, uh, Bo Bichette, Teoscar Hernandez, I think uh, Hernandez had three RBIs, Bichette had two RBIs, Marcus Simeon and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. also had a good weekend. I think they walked a few times as well, or at least Vladimir Guerrero Jr. did, followed by a good start by Steven Matz. And of course, in the rubber match today, uh, you have a five run first inning right out of the gate. And then um, again, people like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. to continue to hit. He went three for four today with an RBI. Uh, Marcus Simeon goes two for three and just, you know, headlined by great um, offensive production once again and Jose Barrios having a really good start um, he allows three earned runs over six and two thirds so that over his former team so that was really good and another highlight was just a quick shout out uh, to the return because we haven't mentioned it yet or you guys didn't yet the return of Josh Donaldson who comes back gets a standing ovation um, pretty much in his first at back back at Rogers Center since 2019 and uh, standing ovation saluted the crowd it was great to see and then of course after today he did a nice jersey swap with Vladimir Guerrero Jr. after the game, they exchanged autographs and everything like that. So, and it's also good to see him on the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hype train for a late surge in the MVP race. Uh, regardless if you, whoever who you think it is, at least we know who Donaldson thinks it is. And it's obviously a good answer from a, a Blue Jays perspective. So, you know, it, you get two out of three from the Twins. Uh, the Orioles do help, do no, the Orioles help out a few days ago. Um, and of course, with the Yankees, uh, the Cleveland Guardians uh, also helped them out when they when they take two out of three from them or they took two out of three from them the jays quickly made up for that opening game loss to the twins where both the yeah, uh, the yankees and red sox won that night so now when you look at it the jays have a game and a half lead over them and uh, all of a sudden too i'm kind of starting to keep an eye on Se um, oakland once again who have kind of creeped into two games back now of um or of that wild card spot and now they're half a game back of the yankees and uh, the Mariners are, or Seattle is four games out. So right now I kind of include uh, the athletics as well in this. And I do think it's possible that you, I mean, they're easily back in it as well. And the Yankees continue just to kind of struggle to get their way in. It feels like other than them playing uh, the Yankees and teeing, I mean, sorry, uh, the Orioles and teeing off on the Orioles. Uh, the Yankees were pretty much tested this weekend against Cleveland. So it was good to see them uh, lose those two games and obviously the best video coming out of it when Gar Garrett Cole uh, realized the score of the the Jays game and of course I guess you have to mention it too in the Red Sox game and him freaking out on the mound that was always great to see uh, from the spider attack guys so that was awesome to see and it's just it's it's a great spot where the Jays remain and you have obviously a one game separation with the Red Sox for that first wild card spot so it's going to go down to the wire regardless in terms of you know whoever it is wherever the game is going to be held 
And uh, the Jays started a big road trip now. So you had, you had to Tropicana field for three games. And of course, after that, you had in Minnesota for four games next weekend. And of course you want to start things off with the, uh, the three game series in Tampa. And we all know how difficult Tropicana field has been, but it just feels like another situation where you have to win this series once again, or, or at least, you know, obviously avoid a sweep at the worst, but you, you just, it feels like you need to take this win. And um, you know, in this last stretch of, I guess, of this past homestand, it's been led by people like Vladimir Guerrero Jr. who continue to hit the ball well, um, who's making that late surge again for an, M- uh, an MVP, can- or just an MVP run, an OPS at 1,300, pretty much just under that, actually, in the last seven, uh, the last seven days. So uh, Boba Shett, Teoscar Nan is obviously among names. Uh, Corey Dickerson as well has had a good week. So it's it's been great to see from um, this Jays homestand. And they're really not slowing down at one point. Obviously, a bump in the road uh, for this first game of the series. And of course... The concern for me now, if anything with this team does translate towards Hunjin Ryu, you know, if, if you're going to write him off already, I guess, in terms of his playing time down the stretch, I'm not going to, I kind of disagree with that just a little bit. I think a phantom I, and let me just explain. I think a phantom IL stint was coming. And I think that was something that was in deep consideration um, throughout the last couple of weeks. And I mean, you want to go back to our last podcast. We were the ones that mentioned it right off the top and um, Mark I, I saw your tweet yesterday tweeting about it and I was uh, very happy with, with very happy with that tweet and I'm sure uh, you were as well but you know you, you hate to be right about this and that's one thing too you want to make it clear is we hate being right uh, or we hated talking about this with Hunjin Ryu in terms of his downfall or his you know his sudden decline and his struggles but you know we're calling it as it is and it's very concerning what we've seen over his last eight starts I believe he has an ERA around eight uh, eight, 10 or something like that in his last eight starts. And, you know, he's going to take probably the next 10 days to recover from it or not even recover, but just try and figure things out at this point, do something. Um, and we really don't know what's going to happen from there, but I do think after those 10 days, he's going to be back and making a start right away. But the question comes to, you know, is this I going to change anything? And when he does come back and maybe he could make a, you know, go on a, a little bit of a heater right before the season ends. And maybe that changes the Jays opinions or all of our opinions heading into the postseason. If the Jays get to that point, there's a lot of question marks with him right now. And I think that's really the only concern I take away from this weekend was officially Hunjin Ryu going on that IL uh, for a next strain is what they're calling it. But it just seems to be at this point, it's going to be a little bit of, it's a phantom IL stint for him to figure things out. Yeah. Well, let's have the Ryu conversation right now, because that's obviously like you want to start the podcast with something positive. It's a positive series, but this is the big concern from this weekend. It is Ryu. He's headed to the 10 day IL Um, just rapid fire. uh, Do you guys think it's a real injury or is it as Bryson mentioned, kind of a phantom IL stint, just giving him time to figure things out, getting basically the bad PR out of the way, just saying it's an injury and not having to answer questions about a demotion to the bullpen or, you know, time off to figure things out. Um, Is it a real IL stint? I think to some degree it is because we heard today before the broadcast, I think it was Hazel May that pointed it out. Uh, Ryu came to Montoyo. He came to the management, came to everybody the day after his, uh, his bad start and said that he wasn't feeling too great, that there was something in his neck. So I think to some degree, there is a bit of discomfort there. However, considering that we've basically been told he's going to miss one start and that's pretty much it, that that this is probably more of a, oh, you're not necessarily injured enough to go on the IL, but in this case, it's worth going on the IL. So it's, if I had to put it more injury or more PR, I would say more PR, but I I do think that there probably is a little bit of a, of a, a very tiny nagging injury that probably in most cases wouldn't lead to an IL stint. Yeah. I just, I think it's a phantom IL. I don't think he's injured whatsoever. I mean, even if there's tightness or not, I think it's, if he's pitching well, it's something that he deals with. I think this is a complete attempt to reset things for him over the next 10 days. And I think P Walker is going to get to work with him as well. I have no belief whatsoever that there is an injury to this. I mean, there, and if there is, I think from what your point was, Jacob, they're nitpicking at something little to say and, um, you know, label it as a next strain. But this is, to me, 0%. Uh, a, a reset, I think Pete Walker and him are going to work at things, are going to try. And we really don't know what comes at the end of, at the other side of this. It could easily change nothing. Or if he comes back, it can change something. And re- pretty much after this, ho- this road trip as well, you have that series with the Yankees um, in that, that following week. So it'll be interesting to see 
where they line him up or if they line him up for the series after that when they they play the Orioles. But for this, this is definitely uh, a re- an attempt to reset him over the next 10 days. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't think it is a real eye out stint. Like, obviously, there's something there. Um, but it, he wouldn't be going on the L if he was pitching well. Like you mentioned, Bryson, the ERA above eight over his last few starts and ERA above five over his last 19 starts. And when you get to the point of talking about 19 starts over the course of the season, that's most of your season for Ryu because he did have a little bit of an injury history at the start of the season. That's pretty much all of his season. He has 29 starts this year. So 10 of those starts not included, the 10 first starts in the season not included, he hasn't been good. Like he hasn't been a league average starter. He hasn't been a middle of the line starter. He's been a starter who on any other contending team, you probably wouldn't have in the rotation if you're just looking at the ERA. So yes, Ryu does have kind of a longer leash because of his track record, because of his history as one of the best pitchers in the game. So like, I expect to see him used in 10 days time in the next series when he comes off the injured list. I don't expect the Blue Jays to sideline him entirely. Like it's going to be, even in the best case scenario, it's only one start before the postseason. But because of the track record he has, I expect him to come back and pitch in a game just because of that. And even if the Blue Jays are thinking of using him only out of the bullpen in the postseason, I think they're going to throw him out there for a bullpen outing in the regular season when it's not high stakes, see how things go only because of his track record, like only because of the history he has in the league. Is he getting this long of a leash? Because on a team like the blue Jays with the other options you have can't be rolling with him every five days. And I think, uh, at this point, Ross Stripling is putting up or going to put up stronger numbers than him. We're going to see Ross Stripling in the rotation more likely than not um, in the start or two that Ryu is going to miss. So, like, he's going to put up – I'm pretty confident he's going to put up better numbers than Ryu, and it's just out of that point. So, looking forward to the postseason, we've seen some questions about whether Ryu should even come out of the bullpen because he's not that kind of high impact, high velocity, shock and awe type pitcher that you see out of the bullpen. He doesn't have velocity. He's a crafty pitcher who relies on location to work. That stuff might not play out of the bullpen. It might not play well in a playoff scenario when you're pitching in the seventh, eighth, ninth inning. Of course, he's not going to be used in high leverage situations. Can be more more of a bulk guy, but Um, In my mind, I think it's either you stick him in the playoff rotation or you leave leave him off the roster entirely. I don't think you can find the middle ground with the bullpen. I don't think there is any middle ground in this scenario. I think it's rotation or off the roster entirely because I don't think his stuff would entirely play out of the bullpen. And honestly, in a postseason scenario, I don't think there's a use for him out of the bullpen. Um, You're not going to be rolling with bulk guys in most situations. If everything goes as planned, you're going to be able to use those high leverage guys most of the games. You're going to have a ton of off days, a ton of time to figure things out and space the guys out, out of the bullpen. You're not going to have a need for someone like Hinjin Ryu who's going to have to pitch three or four innings in an outing. So that's just my view of it heading into the postseason potentially for the Blue Jays looking ahead at that. Do you guys think the Blue Jays stick him in the bullpen, keep him in the rotation, or just throw him off the roster entirely? See. I'm going to be honest. I hate having this conversation because it's not one you want to have. Like Hyunjin Ryu last year, ERA below three, below three as well for the first third of the season or first 40% of it or whenever his ERA started to to rise. Like he's been good at times and he's a guy that the Blue Jays are paying $20 million for. You know, this is, he's somebody that you expect to be this good. But the thing that, that I'm looking at is he's not starting a wild card game. And I know that's obvious. So he wouldn't be on a wild card roster. And I mean, the blue Jays, I think their bullpen is good enough that they wouldn't need Ryu to, to take any type of bulk innings. And even if they did, it would probably be one of the other starters that wasn't pitching in that game. But if you're looking forward to a division series, a five game series, you're anticipating, I would say four starters. So Barrios, Ray, probably, I would say Matt's and somebody's name is leaving. Oh, and Manoa. So you have your four guys. I did. I mean, I, I don't think that you Ryu would really pitch it in any type of starting scenario in a, in a division series. Cause even if it goes the distance, it goes five, it would probably be Robbie Ray or it almost would guaranteed be Robbie Ray in that 
fifth game, probably in the first game as well of that series. And then honestly, the same thing for a championship series, you probably would just see those same four guys. So I, I don't think that Ryu would be on a rotation at this point. Like he's when you're, when you're against the good teams, like potentially the Red Sox in a divisions or in a, in a wild card game, or you're against potentially the Rays or any other division leader in a, in, a, in the next se- series, you need to have, to have guys that are not giving up four earned runs or five earned runs. And that's just the reality of it. So, and also the bullpen is pretty good. I think that's another thing we need to remember is even, even if Ryu could come out of the bullpen, I'm not taking a spot away from Tim Meza or even Ryan Barucki to some extent, just because Ryu has a bigger name. Now, it, it definitely would, would be a very unfortunate to have a guy that you expected to be not only your ace, but one of the bigger or better aces of, of the entire league not be on your playoff roster. But you're at the point now where you have four legitimate options. Like you take Steven Matz, his second half numbers, ERA sub two, he's been perfect. I mean, he's not somebody that you take out of your rotation. And he's someone that I think a lot of people would trust in a playoff situation. And same goes with Ray, Cy Young candidate. Same thing with Manoa. You know, these are all guys, even Brios, like none of these guys are, are going to be off the, or out of a rotation. And they're all guys that you would trust. And frankly, I think could easily throw six, seven innings of one or two run ball against any good team. So unfortunately, I think Ryu would probably not make a playoff roster. Just given the fact that the rotation is set, you don't need five guys in a playoff rotation, no matter what. But when you look at the bullpen, it's, you know, you have your, your top four, you have guys like Merriweather and Pearson who can throw just gas out of, out of nowhere, really. And even with Romano, he can, he can throw 99, hundred. You honestly, you have, I think a solid enough pitching staff that Ryu, if he's not pitching as good as he needs to be, he, there just unfortunately is not much room for him. And that's, I think the reality of it. Cause when you're winning or when you need to win, three of five or you need to win four of seven you cannot afford to give up a game and you look at that game against the twins that's not going to cut it in the playoffs and right now if you want to look at it as a division series the blue jays would be up two to one i know that's very different situation but blue you know those aren't games that you can just lose especially when your offense has been good and it wasn't great in that game but point is is you need to have your your starting pitchers and really any pitcher be good enough to that you can rely on them and not worry that, Oh, is this going to go wrong? Because that's just a recipe for disaster in the playoffs. And if, if you're not going to be used, then it doesn't make sense to have you on the roster, taking up a spot from somebody that would eventually be used. I mean, for me, it's too early. I'm, I'm not going to answer it right away because I, I don't have one right now. Um, I think it's too early to tell because of this IL stint. I think it's going to be a lot of info is going to come throughout this IL stint, obviously. And then after that, when he is eligible to return in those 10 days, you either put him to start against either the Yankees series or the Orioles series, like I mentioned before. Uh, they can throw him in a situation like Mark, you were mentioning about a bullpen thing. But yeah, I, I'm with you on the point where I don't see him coming out of the bullpen. And going back to your tweet, Mark, about how we were the ones talking about this kind of, you know, a little bit of ahead of the curve before others. Um, somebody mentioned you or kind of compared the situation in 2015 to when Mark Burley uh, was left off the playoff roster. And in a way, it is kind of similar. And it was a very good comparison. I'm not sure who it was exactly, but maybe um, you can say the name after. I, I think in a lot of ways, it's similar just because of the, the type of pitchers they are. Both of them aren't high velocity guys, like you were mentioning, Mark. And coming out of the bullpen like that, it doesn't really make sense um, for that to happen. So that's why I don't have an answer yet because if he comes off the IL and starts, you know, and he starts and then he starts performing, um, then the Jays are going to have a, a decision to make if they can even trust him putting it in a playoff rotation. But as of now, and I think it's safe to say, and Jacob, you were talking about this too, is Hunjin Ryu has pretty much turned himself into the team's four to five starter based off performance. And a lot of people, well, right now, it, he would probably be the fifth one. And Steven Matz is going out on over him any day of the week as of now. Could that change? It is possible, regardless of how optimistic you guys think of it. I still, I'm going to leave the door open a little bit for it. I just, you know, we all know the experience Hunjin Ryu's had. He's been in the playoffs, of course, and we know like he has experience with it. However, his numbers over the past month or two have been a complete nightmare. And we, we know what's been going on for him. And we, it's just, 
so strange to me of what happened because we know going back to April in five starts in April, a 260 ERA, five starts in May, a 264 ERA. In June is kind of when it started going a little south, five starts of ERA of 48. But then it, but, but then it felt like in July, uh, he cleaned things up at the beginning of July. He, he made five starts, a 273 ERA. And of course, in August and September, it's been a complete mess. Six starts in August, an ERA of 621, and three starts in September, an ERA of 1045. Pretty much post the All-Star break, Ryu's had an ERA over five and a half. And it's been unacceptable for someone who's getting paid as much as he has been. And I just feel like there really isn't any answer right now to what's been going on in terms of his decline. Um, and that's what I think scares a lot of Jays fans is just, it's really concerning because there's been no answers um, so far of what's been going on. And for Steven Matz, who's somebody who kind of has trended in the opposite direction of Ryu has really performed in these last two months, because we know too, throughout the months of April and May, ERAs of in, in the around four and a half, uh, especially in May, uh, June was, I think his worst month of the season when he had an ERA of 640 and three starts in July, um, an ERA of four and a half. But then in August, uh, he really started cleaning things up. And since pretty much August 1st and five starts, put an ERA of 130 up and he's made four starts this month. It feels like he hasn't been as sharp so far as he has been in August, but however, he's still been pitching um, well for a fourth starter right now or four to five starter right now. And he's somebody who post the all-star breaks had an ERA of 2.8. And he's, you know, like I was just mentioning, completely trending in the opposite directions. And I think if the Jays get to that point uh, past a wild card scenario, Unless things change with Ryu, Steven Matz is the fourth guy, and that's not even a guarantee that he is going to pitch because if there's off days or not, depending on the situation, we all know how it works. You know, there could be easily a scenario where a pitcher is bumped after, you know, just due to an off day, and then he can possibly start after three games. We've seen it before, and that's why, you know, it's tough to see with Ryu because if he does come back and is dominant, um, it, it is the decision they're going to have to make at the end of the year. It's just, it's a lot of money to leave off your playoff roster and, you know, going into this winter as well, there's going to be, up, there's going to have to be a lot of questions answered uh, with him. He's got we two years left of this and based off the sharp decline we've had since, you know, since um, August, it's, you know, it's not something that you want to deal with in year three and four, because if it got this bad in year two, what's year three and year four going to look like? So is Hunjin Ryu back in this rotation next year? I think a lot of us would have called it a lock obviously at the beginning of the year, but now you know, it still could be a higher chance that he is than he isn't, but it's not a lock anymore. And there is a, a, a realistic chance the Jays try and move that contract or part of it. So, I mean, there's just a lot of questions with him right now. And it's just a, been a complete uh, disaster and a complete downfall for him. And it's, it's, it's sad because at the beginning of the year, he was our, this team's ace. And all of a sudden for somebody who's been paying, being paid a million dollars, you know, he's arguably the four to five starter right now. And we really still don't know what's been going on. And I think this is kind of like a last to Jeffrey here over the next 10 days to try and figure things out for him. Now, one thing that I'm looking at, so his IL stint is retroactive to yesterday, which is the 18th. So he can come back. He's eligible to come back Tuesday, September the 28th. Blue Jays have three games starting that day against the Yankees and then three against the Orioles. Last home stand of the I, year. Yeah, and the, the problem that I'm having here is the only time I could see Ryu actually getting work in in those last six games, I mean, the, the Orioles series is a bit different, but I don't think he gets any work in in that Yankee series out of the bullpen unless it's a blowout situation. Like, you remember Tyler Chatwood earlier in the season or Tanner Roark? Or, yeah, it was Tanner Roark because Chatwood was good earlier on. But with Roark, it was, we're only putting him in if it's a blowout. I don't think that that will necessarily be the case. Like I'm looking at that last series against the Yankees as the make or break point for one of those two teams or for both of those teams, really, because I mean, the Yankees, they play the Red Sox before them or before the Blue Jays. And then they come to Toronto. No, I, the winner of that series, I think will end up making the playoffs or go on to make the playoffs. I don't think Ryu gets any work in there unless it's a blowout. And then, with the Orioles series, if you're already out of it, then it, at that point, it doesn't matter. You throw them in and you don't really care. You're just playing to to get out of the – or to, to finish the season. But it's going to be tough. I think if he comes back, it's going to be a – you have pretty much one or two opportunities at best to prove that you can at least throw a couple innings of, of scoreless baseball. So it, that's why I think even the, the playoff roster, if they make it that far, it's it, – it does, I think, look a little bit more far-fetched than – than even I realizing just looking at 
the the lack of games and the lack of of non meaningful games that are remaining when he comes back from the IL. Yeah, definitely not a fun conversation to have, but let's shift it to a conversation about George Springer because this is also something that is not fun to talk about, but it's something that's going on with the Blue Jays. He's in the leadoff spot. He's been always in the leadoff spot, even since, you know, he got injured and we've seen the side effects of that, but he's remaining in the leadoff spot. Um, The numbers aren't where you want them to be. Um, He's been pretty much as cold as you'll probably ever see George Springer be out of the leadoff spot. You have, you know, a few moments of greatness. You have the, um, the, the, home run the dramatic home run and that double header against baltimore but you look at his numbers over the last seven days 22 plate appearances 19 at bats he only used two hits over that span he has a double um and a single and that's it you go to the next the the last 14 days for him 39 at bats six hits that's one double one home run and four uh four singles for him so like it's not good numbers for him out of the leadoff spot so um where do you guys stand on either a moving him to a different part of the lineup or b sending him either to the bench or back to the injured list because for the blue jays right now um the offense isn't a problem but you obviously want to look at every part of your game that you can improve and part of that right now is george springer he's not being productive in the leadoff spot you have marcus simeon more times than not coming up with no one on base and he's hitting a ton of home runs. He's closing in on 43, the all-time record for a second baseman. Um, And no one's on base when he's hitting home runs. He's not cashing in runs besides himself. So um, should George Springer be moved in the lineup? Should he move to the bench? Where do you guys stand on that? I, he's not being, I don't think he's put on the IL, but here's the thing. He was out for a couple days last week. And going into this series, I think it was today's Sunday. I think it was either Friday or Saturday that we had heard the Blue Jays were potentially going to put him in the, in the outfield again. I don't think, I don't think he's actually been in the outfield since returning from the IL. It's just been DH. And we were hearing that maybe he'll come back. It's, I don't think it's likely. I mean, look, he, he is clearly not healthy right now. And I think we all can see it. He like, he's pretty much, he's limping to the plate. Every time he takes a swing, it looks like he's unable to just get up and and recover from that as quickly. Like it's it's obvious, I think that Springer's knee is not where it needs to be. And you know, you could want to compare this to the Donaldson injury in or the calf injury or whatever it was in 2017, 18. You know, he was starting to really struggle offensively. And it wasn't necessarily because he was bad. It was just because when your foundation, you know, you're the your, your lower body is not as good. You're going to struggle. And that's, I think what we're seeing. I, in terms of moving him down in the lineup, I think that's probably the most likely thing. You know, you put Simeon back in the leadoff spot, you pretty much just move everybody up one and then maybe put Springer fifth or sixth, something like that. That's probably all I think that we'll see, you know, because at this point, like what you, you sit him for another couple of days. Well, that could work. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. We saw that last week and it necess- didn't necessarily pay off the way I think we'd expect it. He still is clearly not healthy. I, th- I think that's probably all it'll be is, is a, a lineup shift. And I don't even think that'll work to be honest. This it's probably for Springer at this point, I think it's just trying to get through the season. And, you know, if the blue Jays do end up going on a deep playoff run, it's going to be really tough because you're at the point now where, a guy is clearly not healthy and he's, and you don't, you don't fault him for not being able to perform. Like he's, he's not a hundred percent. He's maybe 80%, but you're at the point now where do you like, do you sit him now to try and prepare for the playoffs or do you move him down? I don't even know if moving down, like that'll improve the rest of the team, but that won't necessarily change Springer's position. Like he'll still be DHing. He'll still be you know, not at a hundred percent, but you're at the point now where if, if he, if he does go on the IL, I think he's done for the year. Blue Jays are probably going to try and do everything to avoid that. However, it is it is looking, I think, like he's he's either just going to have to play through this, and I say that very hesitantly because that's obviously not the, the correct scenario. And if the Blue Jays were out of a playoff spot, he wouldn't even be in the lineup. Or if they were not in the hunt, he would not be in the lineup at all. But if you're looking right now and you're, you're trying to make the playoffs, you're trying to – 
go on a deep run. Like no matter how unlikely that seems, like you're trying to win as many games as you can. You're at the point now where you have to say to yourself, okay, we're going to, you know, we need our best guys at the top of the lineup. And that's why you probably move Springer down. But even Springer by himself, like he's, uh, I don't think that he's even healthy enough to, to perform even in the five or the six spot. So uh, like, the thing is like, it, there's really no clear cut answer. That's why I really have no idea what to say other than you move them down, you rest them for a couple of days. And if that doesn't work, then th- that's probably all it is. Like we're at the point now where you only have 13 games remaining two weeks, t- two weeks as of Tuesday. Like you're at the point now where Springer's not healthy. He's healthy enough to get on the field, but he's not healthy or not fully healthy. And he's, he's just, this is, I think who he'll be for the rest of the season, just considering that there's been this many injuries and all you can really do if you're Charlie Montoya is put your best guys and the guys that are performing at their best right now at the top of the order, because you need runs. You need to, you need to win pretty much. I would say nine of your next 14 or of your last uh, 14. You're at the point now where that's, that's really all you can do. And you just hope that Springer can work through this and get out of that slump to some degree, because it's, you know, it would be unfortunate to not have, you know, he, not to have Ryu on your playoff roster and then also not to have a healthy Springer because those are two guys that could easily make or break a playoff series uh, for this team. Yeah, uh, I disagree with the idea of moving him down. I think we're past the point of putting him on the injured list. I go back to the Yankee series when they swept New York a couple, uh, when it was a couple weeks ago and when he did sit out a few games. I remember saying to the time to both of you that, I think at the time there could have been a consideration to maybe put him on one more time and kind of rest him until this final stretch run. But I think we're past that point. And I think from here on out, um, we're going to have to deal with the way he's been playing and, or just his health. And you just hope from here on out, he gets better. I don't want to move him down to the order. I don't want to really mess up with anything. What's been going on with Marcus Simeon at two, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. at three, but we should have clean up Teoscar and at five. And then from there, the Jays obviously, uh, you know, change it, change it a few times. But for that top and middle part of the order, I'm not touching it. And um, as long as George Springer is playing in this lineup, I think he's leading off right now. As much as, uh, you know, the, the problem with him, and I think we all, everyone knows, and he gets a pass from this based on his numbers dropping slightly. And really, it's just his average dropping the most. His OPS is still kind of um, staying up there as much as it has dropped. It's just not dropping as steep as the batting average has been. So, if you're not as concerned with that, then you're fine. He's, he is still walking from time to time, but you know, the, obviously the elephant in the room with him is that he has no power because of his knee. And it's just, you know, I think Buck Martinez was talking about it today. You just can't really uh, make as good as contact as he usually can just because of the fact of his knee. And um, he just doesn't have a lot of power. You see it. There's a lot of weak contact. There's a lot of lazy fly balls to the outfield. The odd time he does get a solid hit. And of course we go back to the Orioles series. Uh, the Orioles series last week when he hit the go ahead home run in, in the seventh inning at that point. So, um, you know, that's what you're gonna have to deal with for now and 80% George Springer. I think that's what we're calling it. And I think 80% might be calling it a little bit generous. I think we're a little bit under that uh, center field for him. I don't think is an option for the rest of the season at this point, unless something really kind of changes in this last in, in the last week, especially maybe um, the last home stand of the season at the earliest, but I'm not optimistic with that at all. I just feel like we're past the point of maybe putting him on the IL again. I think if the Jays get into a playoff spot or whatever, or such not, he's going to be playing regardless how healthy he is. And I think really their only realistic option at this point is to set him for a few days. And really, I think if that's the case, if he sits, I think the Jays kind of rotate people in and out of that leadoff spot, like we saw uh, when he sat up those games back in New York. And maybe the odd time you can put Bo Bichette leading off, but in terms of, you know, moving everyone down or everyone up one, I just disagree with the idea. I think that they need to keep the lineup intact as much as possible. And uh, for Springer, you know, you, you really credit him for trying to play through it all. And um, I think, you know, him in the lineup, especially, and I think Mark, it goes back to you saying this uh, a couple of weeks ago, is that it just him in the lineup, DH or not healthy completely or not. It just makes the lineup so much deeper and you need him in there um, for your lineup to be, you know, it just, it's a different lineup with him and without him and record wise, it's, different with him in there and without him in there and really over this this last stretch and how hot the offense has been uh they've been you know definitely helping him a lot in terms of uh performance just because he's not obviously performing to his usual standards because of his knee so that's the one thing you can you can be confident with the rest of the guys right now and i think your best point at or your best hope at this point is later to the end of the season in that last week 
um he does you know he slowly and slowly gets his uh, power back and gets his knee back to kind of 100 percent because we all know that he's playing with the knee brace on you can see it when he's batting and um it's just something at this point uh he's got to manage it and i think uh i think we're past the point of shutting him down to be honest with you so i don't expect to see him out of the lineup unless he's sitting from time in and time out but in terms of an il stint i'd be very surprised if anything came up on that unless he obviously injures it worse and knock on wood, you hope that doesn't happen. So um, as long as he's healthy or, you know, on the active roster, I wouldn't, I'm not even going to say healthy. Uh, you're going to see George Springer in the lineup every day, in my opinion. Yeah. I, it, it's too late for an IL stint. If they were going to put him on the IL, they would have done it already um, because, you know, nothing has changed in the last week or the last two weeks. Um, he's been putting up the same numbers for the blue Jays. He, He's been doing the same thing on the field. He's been taking some awkward swings, doesn't have the power, as you mentioned, Bryson. But really, like, the crux of this argument for the Blue Jays is the fact that his impact on the team is very substantial. Like, we've seen it in the record that the Blue Jays have when he's playing and when he's not playing. It's substantially different. And that's why he's on the field. That's why the Blue Jays are forcing him onto the field. And, um, you know, it, it does matter. Like, there are soft parts of this that matter more than just the hard numbers. And I think that is what it comes down to. And um, it's hard to measure that, but we know that the Blue Jays record with him in the lineup is so much better than him without it. So um, yeah, I, I, as far as it kind of sucks to see him go out there and have, it seems like Marcus Simeon always batting with one out in the, the, the bottom or the top of the first inning, like you go back to today's game, the Blue Jays almost had a bat around, um first inning or they did have a bat around first inning um and Springer recorded two of the outs I think two of the three outs in that inning if I'm not mistaken um I think it was Danny Jansen who recorded the other one with a fielder's choice they got the 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 runner out at second but um George Springer came up twice and he recorded two of the outs so it's frustrating to see that when everyone else is doing something productive when everyone else is getting on base George Springer isn't but then we have to look at the the soft skill side of it the impact that he has on the team other than his numbers so definitely an interesting conversation I think personally I would like to see him sit a few days um the offense can survive without him we saw it in Baltimore yes it was against the Orioles but the Blue Jays scored 22 runs in a game without him um you can survive without George Springer in the lineup I think having him on the active roster is important but if he's in the dugout, he's there for, you know, the moral support side of things. I think you can survive without him in the lineup. So we'll see what the Blue Jays do. Certainly interesting. Um, to wrap up the podcast for today, we've got 13 games left in the season for the Blue Jays, potentially 14 if we have a tie-breaking 163. Um, I've got a list of over-unders for our predictions for the remaining 13 games of the season. So um, the first one, is related to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Of course, he's been scorching hot lately, had another good game today and another good series. He went three for four today. He's at 46 home runs. So the over-under is 50.5 home runs for Vladimir Guerrero Jr. I am going to take the over, but I'm going to say 51. Okay. I was going to say 50, so but I'll over. go with 51. Yes, I think... He's, I don't think he's going to tie or surpass Jose Bautista's record of 52. I'd love to see it, but I think that 51 is probably where he'll uh, he'll end up on. The over-under was 50, correct? You, um, 50.5, yeah. For me. 50.5. Yeah, and yeah, so Mark, you, yeah, you know that I am over on this 100%. He's at 46 right now. And it is going to be close. It's going to be around, it's going to be bare. I think it's just going to be just over 50. I'll say um, 52. I think he hits 52 home runs. Oh, okay. I'm taking the under on that. I think he'll end up at 50. He'll hit the, the benchmark, but he won't get past that. And um, the, the Blue Jays record you alluded to, Jacob, but 54 home runs for Jose Bautista 2010. He's not reaching that. None of us think he will. Um, that's a little outlandish for the remaining 13 games. But um, yeah, I'll put it under. I'll be the contrarian on that one. Uh, the next one, there's 13 games left in the season. As I mentioned, um, I'm putting the wins for the Blue Jays at 7.5. Do you take the over or under on that? Oh, I take over 100%. I say nine. Okay. Nine wins at the absolute bare minimum. I think they have, yeah. So 13 games, you're going to need to win pretty much all those. And aside from, I well, think they, that... 
they need to win those, but yeah. will they win those? What do you think is going to happen? That's the thing. So the I mentioned earlier, they have three against the Yankees other th- and three against the Rays coming up. But other than that, you have four against the Twins and three against the Orioles. I think and I'm not saying bank on those bad teams, but you kind of got to think that those are easy wins plus one to two wins in each of those other two series. So I'm going to go with nine. I think that's probably going to be enough to get them in the playoffs, but uh, we'll have to see. But I'm yeah, I think the, the over is at nine. Um, I'm going to take the over. I think the Jays uh, have an opportunity to do so. And I think really these are more games that they have to take and what, how they've been playing. I'm going to go off the same logic as I did uh, in their previous race series. I've gotten no signs uh, to believe that they're going to slow down. So I think as much as they need to win these games, I think they fall on well, regardless if it's, you know, winning series at the worst case scenario, if there's one series that they maybe lose down the stretch, I think they go over for uh, for sure. And they, they have an opportunity to do so as well for those final three games against the Orioles. So I'm taking the over, over seven and a half. Yeah, I'll take the over as well. I'll put it at eight, like just over. I think like if they win nine with the remaining 13 games they have, that puts them at, 93 wins I think that's what I predicted at the start of the season but I still think that's a lot for a team like the Blue Jays and I think it's more than plenty to get into a wild card spot so I think eight is enough I think that's what they'll be able to do especially with perhaps a tough series against Tampa Bay perhaps a tough series against New York so that's where I'll put it at a couple more over-unders um Simeon 43.5 home runs will he break the all-time record for a second baseman with 44 home runs or really just tie it or come a little bit short i'm taking the i'm going to put it at the over at 45 now he he needs five home runs in 13 Holy games cow. i mean hey it's realistic i mean five home runs in 13 games i mean okay that's is that a lot yeah i mean but i i don't think it's very unlikely i mean you're in aside from the one trip to minnesota you're in ale east ballparks I think it's it's realistic and especially in front of those home friends to to end the game or to end the season off. I think that it, we it, we could be seeing a uh, a very big piece of history with Simeon to end these last couple games off. 44 and a half was the over under, correct? 43 and a half. 43 and a half. Home runs, I think I'm going to take the over as well. I think he barely gets wow. over. I think I'm going to probably sit around 44. I think it's what Jacob said. Or, but I think um, another, just another guy, I'm, I have got no reasons to believe that he won't. Um, and I, I do think he takes the over. He's currently at 40. So he's, he's do he does have uh, only a few more to go. I'm surrounded by optimists. I'm putting it at the, I'm taking the under. I think he'll end at 43. He'll just tie, uh, who is it? Davey Williams, who are, I don't know the name, someone, whoever holds the current record for second baseman, all-time homers um, from the 1970s. I'll put it at 43 is going to just tie him um, and make history in some sense, but not totally break history. Um, Okay. This one might require a bit of thinking. um, And maybe that's a bad sign as we record this late at night, but um, games up on New York that the Blue Jays will end the season at, and I'm putting the over under at 1.75 games back or games up on New York. So at the end of the season, right now, the Blue Jays are a game and a half up on New York. Will they end more than that or less than that up on New York? And if you say less, that includes a possibility of New York passing them. Oh, Lord. See, the thing is that one series next week, it's going to det- uh, – that'll, I think, shift the direction of both of those teams – or both of those – yeah, both those team seasons. So if the Blue Jays take two out of three – Right now they're a game and a half. So I'm going to assume that they go into that series within a half a game uh, apart or within a game probably because I think Blue Jays have an off day uh, before that series. I am going to put, I'm probably going to put the under at one, I'm going to put it at one game, but the Blue Jays are still going to hold that playoff spot. I think that they're going to win that series against the Yankees and then depending on how it goes i mean if they do clinch it'll probably be like a last minute uh, thing in the Orioles series unless the the yankees get swept that could easily happen and then you know that, that could blow a, my predictions out the water but I, i'm gonna put it at a game so i'm gonna take the under but it's it all kind of resides on that last series against the yankees and who can take two of three or who can take god forbid three of three if the yankees can do that but i mean if the blue jays do it that would be great but i think 
it's realistic that the the two teams will be separated by one game. Yeah, and just to correct myself, it should be 1.5 instead of 1.75 because okay, he so can't super... end the season with different numbers. Yeah, I was, Anyways, I was gonna say that was being that was tricky. Maybe yeah, you weren't kidding <laughs> about me thinking about that, but uh, I'm saying you know if you're if you're um, if you're not taking the over, you're not having fun. Over, I, I do really I do think so. I mean. The Yankees, again, they're just hanging in there. They're, I think they're playing 500 baseball over the last 10 days. The Jays, on the other hand, I think we spoke about this, completely opposite directions. The Jays are on the high. The Yankees are not rock bottom. They're not. Um, the, the, uh, they're just, I think they're hanging on, though, and I really do. I think Oakland really has a, a decent chance as well. They're only a half a game out of and New York, and really the Yankees have a tough schedule um, going. I, other than the Rangers for three games this uh, this week, they have Boston next weekend. They have obviously the series in Toronto with the Jays. And then after that, they end the season in St. Petersburg or not in St. Petersburg, but in a game at Yankee stadium um, against the race for three or for three games. So if, if the Jays continue to go, and this also kind of relates to the over under with the Jays win total. So I, we, we both, I said over as well as Jacob. Um, I think we all actually, I think all three of us said over, correct me if I'm wrong, but I put it around nine. And if the Jays go on that pace and the Yankees kind of, you know, play the way they're playing right now, um, then they are going to be better than the the Yankees by a game and a half. So I'm taking the over. All right. One last one super quickly before we end it. Um, games behind Boston at one. So do they end? Uh, or I guess uh, I have to put a 0. 0.5 games behind Boston to end the season. I'll, I can contribute first on this one. I think they'll end up uh, – I'll take the over on that. I think they're going to be more than a game plus behind Boston. I think Boston's going to take the first wild card. Yeah, I'll take the same thing. I'll say a game as well. It's at a game right now, and it's you know, it probably is not going to change too much. I mean, I'd love to see potentially the Yankees – if they're going to win a series within the next two weeks, it's, it could be that game against the – Red Sox, maybe the Blue Jays can overtake them, but I think that yeah, it'll it'll most likely be one game between the Blue Jays and the Red Sox, and we'll get to see uh, the wild card game at Fenway Park, which is a nice ballpark. I mean, you know, if I had to see it anywhere else, I'd like to like it to be there, but yeah, it'll, it, I think it'll I'll I'll second what you said and say a game between them. This is this is tough. Because, you know, I could do the easy and agree with both of you, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say um, the Jays finish as the first wildcard team. They're playing the best baseball once again um, over all these teams. I know the Red Sox have started to heat it up over the past 10 days, but they also have been playing the Orioles. So that's why I'm not looking too much into it um, or as much as I should or as much as any other people are. Sorry to uh, just to make that clear. But I do think the wildcard game is going to be at Rogers Center in front of 50,000 fans. All right. All right. Some bold predictions to end it, uh, but we will wrap it up there. Thank you to everyone who listened to this episode of section 138. less than two weeks left in the season. So it'll be exciting two weeks to watch. Uh, and we will be working out our potential postseason schedule over the course of the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be an exciting time until then you can keep posted on everything we're doing on our social medias. That's at section 138 pod on Twitter and Instagram, you can support our podcast by giving us a rating and review on Apple Podcast. And you can watch our episodes on YouTube, or if you do watch our episodes, you can listen to them wherever you listen. All right, quite the series against the Minnesota Twins, and we will catch you midweek after this series against the Tampa Bay Rays.